Hello, my name is Carol May Whittick, spiritual life coach and the host of Higher Energetic Resonance Inspirations. This week, the subject is authenticity. Why is it so rare? How does it benefit us? What can we do to be our authentic selves and live a life of authenticity? From Mandy Hale, you'll learn as you get older that rules are made to be broken. Be bold enough to live life on your terms and never, ever apologise for it. Go against the grain. Refuse to conform. Take the road less travelled instead of the well-beaten path. Laugh in the face of adversity and leap before you look. Dance as though everybody is watching. March to the beat of your own drummer and stubbornly refuse to fit in. From Roy T. Bennett. Don't let the expectations and opinions of other people affect your decisions. It's your life, not theirs. Do what matters most to you. Do what makes you feel alive and happy. Don't let the expectations and ideas of others limit who you are. If you let others tell you who you are, you're living their reality, not yours. There is more to life than pleasing people. There is much more to life than following others' prescribed path. There is so much more to life than what you experience right now. You need to decide who you are for yourself. Become a whole being. Adventure. The big question for us all, are you living authentically? And we hear so much about authenticity, being authentic, being in your truth. But what does that really mean? So I'm just going to break it down into some questions that you may want to ask yourself when you're looking at, are you being authentic? How to discover your authenticity? And then why we may experience resistance to authenticity. And then also how to really just step in and be authentic. So when it comes to authenticity and and living authentically, Here's a question to ask, who are you really? So many of us don't really know who we are because society's voice and direction and directives about what we should be doing is so loud and we have the peer pressure, family, friends, work colleagues, society, celebrity, media telling you that there are certain points that you should hit in your life and certain achievements that you should have made at certain periods of time in order for you to be who you are. But having spoken to so many people on my podcast, on her conversations, and then just generally in life, there seems to be a recurring theme. And the recurring theme is the people who will ignore the nudges of the discomfort that they feel, the the, the dissatisfaction that they feel in their life, will continue to live inauthentically. And they may not outwardly express it but you can see over time that something within them something within them dies they will find ways of making up for that emptiness that they feel inside of themselves the voice that keeps coming back and reminding them that what they're doing may not be all there is maybe there is something more it's a question of also asking what is true for you what are your what are your true values what do you what do you want to be who do you want to be what do you like to do and again it's so surprising to me as somebody who has always had a pretty strong idea of where I wanted to go in life and aimed for it that's not to say that that wasn't without its own challenges it was always surprising that I was in such a minority because I was kind of bucking against the grain and the noise of the world telling me what I should do And like I said, going your own way in a world where the majority do not is never really an easy path to take. But it just feels like the right one, because as well as the vision that you have in your mind of what attaining your dreams could be for you. And obviously you never know until you get there. Also, what weighs heavy and weighs heavier sometimes is the fact that you may never attain that and the fear of living in regret and it's not ideal to live our lives in regret and go towards things because of fear but sometimes that's the impetus that you need sometimes the the overwhelming reality of 
going through life and never having met who you are, expressed who you are on a deep, real soul level is frightening to you. And for me, it always has been. If I don't get to at least try all the things that I've said that I wanted to do, what, I've, what have I done with my life? I've wasted it. And if you're hiding, if you're hiding and suppressing what it is about yourself, if you've pushed the better part of you into the shadows of yourself, why are you doing that? Who are you doing that for? Who are you trying to please? Are you trying to please somebody? Think about the person that you are pleasing when you are hiding the better part of yourself. If you're hiding the better part of yourself, either by being in company that you know is no good for you or suppressing those real emotions by TV, sex, gambling, shopping, all the great stuff that we have out there that allows us to step away from who we are. The relationships that we build and the person that we are and the people that we draw into our lives based on this kind of vague version of ourselves is going to be unsatisfactory. You're always kind of be trying to kind of hit a moving target because you're trying to look inside somebody else's mind to work out what it is they want from you. And and probably vice versa, these connections that we have based on us wearing this mask, this this societally acceptable mask, means that there, there will rarely be any true authentic connections and then when we start to kind of burgeon out of that and try and step forward see who supports you and who does not because that will really give you an indication of who your inauthenticity was serving to be authentic living authentically are your actions aligning with your words when you say you're going to do something do you do it do you say it within the conversations and the promises or the ideals that you have for yourself are you meeting those Are you allowing yourself to put things off another week, another day, another week, another month, another year, another decade? Your life goes past and you've just not done the thing that you said that you were going to do. It weighs heavy on the part of you that's trying to guide you to what it is you can be, the best part of who you can be. And it weighs heavy on you and it brings you down. Are you expressing yourself or suppressing yourself? Do you find yourself when you want to say yes, you say no or no, you say yes. The amount of energy that it takes to go against the grain of your soul is enormous. Allowing yourself to be who you are is such freedom and yet it comes at a cost. But when you're in that space of freedom, what is drawn to you is immeasurable to where you are when you're suppressing yourself. So what do you do? Do you stay when you know you should go? I did a quick reel the other day and I was thinking about the Jim Rohn quote where he said, move, you're not a tree. If you are not allowed to be who you are, if you're going to stay there for an extended length of time, that's going to play on your self-esteem. And you may get into the mindset that you can't move and it's not going to work for you if you go somewhere else. But the, as he said, you're not a tree. You're not planted there. You can go and do and move and be anywhere else. And I use a story of water. And we're all used to paying so many different prices for a bottle of water. We can get a similar bottle of water from a supermarket. I can get one for less than one pound. And then if I go to an airport, it will cost twice as much. If I go to an upmarket hotel or bar, it's going to cost three times as much, four times as much, even more. And it's simply because it's the same thing that just has a different value in a different space. So what is it going to take to move from the place where you're not being authentic to allow yourself to be authentic? There's a quote here from Brené Brown. If you trade your authenticity for safety, you may experience the following. Anxiety, depression, eating disorders, addiction, rage, blame, resentment and inexplicable grief. From Tanya Markle. Your truth will bring out the worst in others. Your love will tingle what they have numbed. Your authenticity will provoke closed minds. Your gratitude will irritate trolls. Your success will attract haters. Your empowerment will create enemies. Your uniqueness will antagonize assholes. 
Your courage will attract cowards. Your sexuality will freak others out. Your joy will expose their inner shit. Your compassion will mask envy. And love, that's what it's all meant to do. Your aliveness will reveal many mental prisons, but help to set even more minds free. And that's probably the greatest resistance that comes up when it comes to authenticity is the reaction of others the the envy of the others the way that it triggers other people when they see you moving and burgeoning into a different space trying to be more of who you are and a lot of the time it's just out of fear mostly it's out of envy because you are showing people something that they have yet to tap into themselves, that courage to actually move away from mediocrity and actually be outstanding in their life and stand out. Resistance to authenticity sometimes comes from not knowing what you want and that then requires more introspection, time for you to really think about what it is that would bring you joy. Sometimes it is thinking about the fun that you used to have when there was no timetable on it, that when there was no charge on it, when it wasn't work, when it was pure fun and just doing things for the sake of doing, being in that flow state. And even if you don't know exactly what it is, just reminding yourself there have been times when you've just had joy and experience and experience peace and, and flow in your life and recalling the feeling, recalling that feeling back to you. So you can remind yourself that I felt this way before. What can I do? What can I do that will get me into that state even more? And we sometimes have resistance to get on and do the work, to explore who it is and what it is that we need to look at within ourselves and how we need to expand. From Carl Jung, the privilege of a lifetime is to become who you truly are. So how to be authentic. Forgive yourself for getting caught in the people pleasing, in the diminishment of yourself, in the loss of your self-worth and remind yourself again of who you were before and why. Work on building your inner resilience, your inner strength. Start to notice the reactions that you have when people are suggesting things to you that you would rather not do and really just tune into what that feels like and if you're feeling the energy of I don't want to do that maybe answer that it might just be a small thing it might be somebody trying to order for you in a restaurant and you are not really going along with what it is that they want start there start small so you can build that muscle of standing up for yourself, of stepping into who you are, of stating what your needs and your requests and your desires are. That's how you're being authentic. Just taking something on board and doing it for the peace and and making everyone else happy. If it's not making you happy, that's not authentic. And this doesn't mean that you have disregard for other people's feelings. But, and this is the, the bit that is difficult for everyone, you come first come to a a feeling of self-love if you if you're always giving to other people if you're always giving to other people you say because you love them then you're going to have a a recollection of what love feels like and what serving others feel like how can you turn that into service to yourself in a way that is self-love and self-caring when we talk about caring it's it's very difficult because we're all heart-centered people we want to do the best we want to look after everybody but we also have to stop caring what people think and especially if they've not achieved what it is that you're aiming for or who you want to be or understand who you want to be if they're content to have you be in a minimized version of yourself and you're allowing that to be swaying you away from the things that you want to stand for then you have to assess that connection and it might not necessarily be that you remove these people from your life but maybe you see them less frequently maybe you give them less of your energy or your time when you are with them and you start to develop a way of speaking up for yourself in that way standing up for yourself showing people who you are and actually seeing what happens when you open up and be truthful about what it is that you want in your life you're going to lose a lot but you will also gain a lot and the most that you will gain is yourself so leaving you with this it's identifying what you want in all areas of your life 
And if the whole thing seems so daunting and such a big ask and you're concerned about people who will be upset when you're making almost this U-turn on the person they think you are and know you to be, then start small. Start with things that you may be gaslighting yourself about and being real about how you feel about things. And this can be a very private way of building up your resilience and building up your self-worth and your self-esteem by actually just honouring your own wants and needs within yourself. From James Hollis, we are not here to fit in, be well balanced or provide exemplar for others. We are here to be eccentric, different, perhaps strange, perhaps merely to add our small piece, our little clunky, chunky selves to the great mosaic of being. As the gods intended, we are here to become more and more ourselves. And to finish from May Sarton, we have to dare to be ourselves, however frightening or strange that self may prove to be. Thank you for joining me on this episode of Higher Energetic Resonance Inspirations and my exploration into authenticity. I think this is one of the biggest lessons for us all to step into. And once we discover who we are, who we really are, what we really want, what we desire in life and who we and what difference we want to make in the world and start to step towards that, that's going to really make a shift in all areas of our life. It's a it's a big step, especially if you've spent a lifetime of doing the best for others, putting other people first and not really taken seriously who you are and what you want for yourself. And now you're just discovering that. And a tool that you can use to really dig into that is my Embody Her, Embody Higher Energetic Resonance journey. It's a free week-long journey that you can take with me. It's three steps closer to being the woman of your dreams. And as I've mentioned before, even if you don't know what that looks like in terms of your goal or your purpose, you know how you want to feel. So get into the space of the energy and the emotion and the smell of feeling what you want to feel and start from there. There's a link in the show notes below for you to join up. And if you desire to go deeper with a one-on-one coaching experience with me, there's a link also there to the show notes to expand into that. Find out more about me on my website. It's carolmaywittick.com, C-A-R-O-L-M-A-E-W-H-I-T-T-I-C-K.com. On Instagram, it's Kazmik, C-A-Z-M-I-C-K. On Facebook, Carol May Wittick. So until the next episode of Higher Energetic Resonance Inspirations, have an amazing week.